Well, hello there. How is everyone? I hope you're all well on this fabulous, fabulous Thursday. Thursday. It's a funny old day. It's not Friday. It's not the midweek hump. It's just it's that, it's that day that's like that period between Christmas and New Year. It exists, but we don't really know why. But anyway, you're looking amazing, by the way. So we get straight into the meat and potatoes. As we talk about yet a game... We're talking about the crime itself in the Idaho 4 case because a lot of you reached out following Grey Hughes' video. Now, if you haven't seen it, the link is in the description of this video. And Grey Hughes, we know some people are not fans of Grey Hughes. Some people are. I don't generally watch a lot of Grey Hughes stuff, but I do have a massive respect for some of the things that he does. And his latest video, which I would definitely say go and watch does what he does best, and that is he has done a 3D simulation of the crime and tried to explain that this crime could have taken place in a period of seven minutes. That's what he says. It could, is seven minutes long enough? But it's like everything. It's like when we talk about AI versus humans. There is an element missing that distinguishes heavily between the two, and that is that one has emotion, one has feeling, one doesn't. And that's like the video of this seven-minute period, if you like. Now, it's very easy to turn around and say that this crime could have been done in a certain amount of time. And I have no issues with accepting that in certain circumstances, yes, I 100% agree that someone could have entered this house and done this crime in that small window of opportunity. Now, do I feel that in the Idaho 4 case, that is 100% what happened? And one person and one person alone entered this house and done this crime in, in, in this kind of time frame. I don't. I don't at this stage because there has not been enough supportive evidence to convince me of such. And there are so many questions in the background that enables me to feel that there is still possibly a curveball out there. You may be, you may not be the same, but that's just that's just me. But anyway, let's talk about this seven minutes and this video in particular and what is missing and what I feel the problem with this is. Now, you could turn around and say, what would it take for someone to be able to enter into this property and do this crime in this in this time frame? Because even though we can turn around and look at a screen that's just got a clock ticking over and over and over and feel, oh, that's such a really long period of time. It's like when you're waiting for an egg to boil. That time seems like ugh, such a long time. But when you're busy, time flies. Time flies when you're having fun. So the the actual concept of time it's it's not that simple. It's not that simple. If it, like I say, if it's boring, it seems like it's a long period of time. If it's fun, it, it, it's a quick period of time. But for me, the issue with the Idaho four case, and for this to have happened in such a small period of time, is it means that the person who did it was one of two things, and that is that they were either completely familiar with the property, with the layout, with everything that was going on in that home. So they must have done reconnaissance of some description. They knew who was in the house and where they were. They knew what to expect when they entered in the house. Or, if they weren't familiar with that house, they had done it before. They were familiar with the killing itself. So that they went into the house with some degree of confidence, so it enabled them to not overly think and be restricted on those thoughts as they went through the process of committing the crime. And again, this is my non-professional opinion. I, I, I don't work in law enforcement. I'm not a professional. I, I have a degree in psychology, but that doesn't help me here whatsoever. But I just think about it like this. So let's just say 
Brian Koberger is the person who did it. And he is completely unfamiliar with this property. He's never been in this house before. There is no connection with these students. So he enters into this situation where he leaves his car and he goes up to the property. Does he know the door is locked? Does he know the door's unlocked? Does he consider that he's going to have to break into the house? If so, does he take something with him? Because we know that he's got a K-bar, in, or, or we have led to believe he has a K-bar in his hand, but it's not attached to him, so he must be holding it, or it's perhaps in a pocket. But then if he thinks he's going to have to break into the house, then what does he, does he take something else to break into the house? Does he have a crowbar on him, for instance, so he can leverage the door and break in? Is he afraid that by breaking into the door that he's going to rouse somebody? Or does he know that the people are in bed and that they're asleep? But we've just had a delivery. We've just had a delivery of food, the DoorDash. So surely there may be lights on. So does he think that they could be awake? Or again, is it complete darkness? But anyway, so let's just say, for argument's sake, he knows that the door is consistently left unlocked. But then does he know that the rooms inside the house are consistently left unlocked? Because we know that the doors to the bedrooms themselves have locks on them. So what is his intention? Is he intending on kicking the doors in? Or again, does he have a crowbar in one hand and a K-bar in the other and the sheath in the pocket? But anyway, he enters this house and just say it's pitch black. We've heard from the likes of Dave that this was just a house that you went into and there was just door after door after door after door. So how does he know where to go in the house? What makes him go upstairs? What is his thought process? Again, is he familiar with what he's doing? Is this pre-planned? If it's pre-planned, then how is it pre-planned? Does he know who his target is and does he know where his target is in the house? How is that possible? How is it? How does he know who is where? Or is it purely guess? And if it's purely guess, then why not just go to the doors on the floor that you enter, rather than go up to a top floor, which makes the route back more precarious, as the likelihood is, is that you rouse people and then block your escape route. Do you see what I mean? It's not quite that simple as to say someone has entered into this house who apparently has never ever been in trouble with the police at all not connected to any other crimes what we've heard of we've known that they've looked and they've not found anything but brian koberger the law student who apparently drove his own car over to a crime left a knife sheath with his dna on it done weird shit with his phone that again pretty much painted him as the killer caught on camera driving around the area before like a lost delivery driver (laughs) but yet he was able to go into this house with some degree of accuracy and skill because my thought process is and i've said this before so we're going over old ground here slightly but i'm only doing it because of this latest video that i was asked to look at The only person I could see that could do this with the skill I believe was needed would have been someone with military skill, military precision of some degree, or more than one person. More than one person who would make this job a quicker and easier job. Because let's not forget as well, not only is it done with this timing, this this quickness, But it must have been done with some degree of silence, despite the fact that there was altercations, if you believe the likes of Steve Gonsalves, which we have no reason to believe that he lied. I know they've said some pretty odd stuff, and, you know, some of the things that is around the Gonsalves family in general, case in point, the the number plates that have recently turned up that must have been ordered close to a year ago, or eight months ago. Now, I'm not saying that, that. It just seems a little bit odd to me. Seems a little bit odd to me. And look, I, I, I have massive respect for Steve Gonsalves and the way he's handled himself. But this isn't just the Kaylee show. There was three other victims. And I just feel that some of the things that are done 
had done to to bring Kaylee to the forefront of everything, make this hugely about Kaylee, like the plates with the Idaho badge on. I'm thinking, well, why weren't she going to Texas? She'd left the fucking area. She was going, she was leaving. Why would she get plates with Sunshine Idaho or Potato State, whatever it is? And why would they take this long to arrive if they'd have been ordered months and months and months ago? Unless they are ordered through the UK Royal Mail, and that makes complete sense because that's about their time frame. Anyway, I digress. I digress. Point being that this time frame for me to put Brian Koberger into this scenario with the human element, not just a clock ticker, not just like AI, but to put apprehension, to put, you know adrenaline to put an altercation that wasn't expected then to factor in noise that could have roused other people not to mention any other names our, our surviving room we know who they are but do you know what i mean this is this is for me yes it could be done in this period of time but could brian and what we know about brian could he have done it in that period of time without some form of assistance or knowledge of the property and what he was entering into. Let me know down below. Go and check out the Grey Hughes video and let me know what you think. Because again, it's a, it's, that is a room splitter because the reality is, yes, it could be done. It could be done in this period of time. It could have could Brian have done it in this period of time? That's the question. Let me know down below, and I'll catch you all in the next one.